Hi everyone, my name is Kevin Lyman, and I'm here today to tell you about Resumazing, an automated web service aimed at helping job seekers land their dream job. This is Victor. He's a senior studying mechanical engineering at RPI. Victor's dream job is to work at Boeing, so he did what any job seeker would do and applied online. But that was six months ago, and he still hasn't heard back yet today. Now, we wanted to get to the root of Victor's problem, so we started doing some research. We came across a couple of blogs talking about something called resume screening, an automated process large companies use to filter incoming resumes and score them based on the presence of keywords deemed relevant to the job at hand. Only resumes that score the highest ever get viewed by a hiring manager, and the others never get seen by anyone. Now, our research gave us a couple of hypotheses. The first was that companies actually screen resumes, and the second was that it's possible to solve this problem for job seekers. So we set out to test those hypotheses. We reached out to some of the larger companies in our professional networks and got in touch with Microsoft, Citibank, and of course, Boeing. We asked each of them if they in fact do screen resumes, and every one of them admitted to it. They even went on to explain that by reading their job descriptions closely, you can gain some insight into what keywords they'll screen your resume for. For example, if you apply to a job like this, where there's an anomalous amount of emphasis placed on a word like audit, they're probably going to screen your resume for industry terms relevant to auditing. Once we knew that we could manually get around the screening process, we knew we could develop a tool that learns thousands of patterns, just like this one, and allows job seekers to leverage them to better sell themselves in the application process. At that point, we started to track our assumptions using the business model canvas. We started with a killer hypothesis that job seekers would see value in an automated resume advice service. We went out to test that assumption by building an MVP for our service only one week after coming up with the idea for Resumazing. My co-founders and I went to a hackathon at the University of Michigan and in only 36 hours built our first working iteration. Now, building your MVP at a hackathon comes with a ton of huge benefits. We immediately got to show off our MVP to 1,000 students. And though we didn't even realize it at the time, this is where we had our first 30 customer interviews. These people came to us and talked, and we listened. We were also blown away by the sponsor company's response. We won the Data Science Award and got $1,000 to keep working on this. We were so excited that we put our MVP live at Resonazing.net for one week, and in that time got 500 users. To us, that was validation that we should keep going and that our value prop was legitimate. So we went on to, text, uh, to test our next hypothesis surrounding how we could possibly monetize this service. We hypothesized that we could simply charge our job seekers $1 every time they asked for advice. We tested that by going out and doing over 300 customer interviews. Now, every one of these 300 job seekers told us that they wanted resume advice and they were interested in our data-driven approach. But to our surprise, only five of them were actually willing to pay for this service. That totally invalidated our assumption that we could charge our users basically any amount of money. But at the same time, it taught us a lot about what they were looking to get out of Resumazing. It taught us that they wanted a sleeker, more intuitive interface with more features than we had possibly imagined. So while half of our team went into researching other ways to monetize the service, the other half focused on increasing our user acquisition because typically it's easier to monetize large user bases. So we hypothesized that iterative development and working closely with our customers would drive this user acquisition. We tested that by prototyping a handful of the features that our previous users had suggested and spending a month prototyping as many of them as we could. We put together a closed beta where we selected 100 job seekers to play with those features and we worked closely with them for a month, learning exactly what we should focus our time on and how to lay a roadmap for our product moving forward. We spent two months incorporating that feedback and launched our third and most recent live beta. We were blown away by the results when it was live for only one week and got over 10,000 users with no paid advertising. We used the feedback that we got through our customer development to tailor our site to the point that 41% of all visitors to Resumazing.net either signed up for our mailing list or submit their resume. That's more than 20 times the average conversion rate for a web service. We even started getting covered in major blogs like Lifehacker. Now, this totally validated our assumptions that these activities and these customer relationships would drive our user acquisition. But unfortunately, they also drove up our costs. Because we had to scale our service to accommodate the needs of tens of thousands of users and also make the service more intelligent, we had to start paying money. We even built out uh, an artificial intelligence engine that crawled the web collecting millions of resumes and learning from the patterns that existed in them. Now, this crawler collected three million resumes, which was an extremely valuable key resource for us, but it also meant to crunch that data, we had to start paying Amazon $1,000 a month for our hosting costs. Our solution to that was twofold. First, we reached out to Amazon, leveraging our connections with them and partnering to remove those costs. 
Secondly, we revisited our revenue streams, this time considering opening up to a multi-sided market and saying, uh, hypothesizing that we can charge companies to recruit our users. We set out to test that hypothesis by interviewing over 75 recruiters and hiring managers from 75 different companies. Two pain points came up uh, co pretty consistently. The first was that modern recruiting tools cast a wide net, attracting thousands of unqualified applicants. The second was that they're stuck paying steep monthly fees for all of these resumes that they don't want. So we asked all of these recruiters if they would be interested in a tool that allows them to define exactly what they want in a job seeker and filter down our user base to only those deemed qualified. 68 of the 75 indicated that they were interested, but they still would not pay a monthly fee because they still had the risk of buying resumes they didn't want. And so this validated our assumption that there was value in recruiting our users, but it invalidated our assumption that we should charge monthly. So we went back to those recruiters and we asked them, what if we offered you that tool, but we only charged you for the resumes you wanted? All of them responded positively. So we asked, if we put a resume in front of you and we censored the contact information, how much would you pay to reach out to a user you know is qualified? The average answer was $21. This validated our new revenue stream uh, and gave us something to shoot for. This also gave us a ton of huge product advantages. By bundling this with a recruiting service, we understand exactly what companies want to see on a resume. This allows us to give better resume feedback than any other service, which in turn allows us to drive more users into our platform, giving these companies more users to choose from. It also means that we're able to start having direct impact on nearly 60% of the $400 billion annual talent acquisition market. Adding this new market to our business model canvas meant we needed to start forming new key partnerships and focusing on new channels to reach out to both job seekers and hiring companies. The first we looked at was partnering with college career centers and career fairs to spread our word. I'm happy to say that we've already partnered with both Harvard and Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute. The next thing that we looked at was using Crunchbase to identify companies which had recently closed a round of funding. We target them because we know they're about to scale and hire a ton of people. Finally, we started looking at partnering with hackathons because we know that by managing their resume handoff to sponsor companies, we immediately fill our user base with tons of the most qualified applicants and the companies that are spending the most money to target them. In November, we'll be working with HackRPI, meaning that we'll have 30 companies recruiting through our service. Next month, my co-founders and I, when we graduate, will begin working on resumes in full time, and with this comes significant changes to our cost structure, because we'll have to start paying for product development and for a place to work. Now, this brings me to the last thing I'd like to talk about, our key resources, specifically our most valuable one, our team. Joseph, Shankar, Trevor, Diogo, and myself represent five of the most talented and proven data scientists and interaction designers at RPI, Harvard, and Georgia Tech. We've been working together for nearly three years now on almost a dozen award-winning products and collectively have amassed experience at over 20 different companies, including Microsoft, Google, SpaceX, Amazon, and Facebook. And advising us is an all-star team of serial entrepreneurs who have seen hundreds of millions of dollars in exits, Y Combinator graduates, and Fortune 500 executives. Together, we've used the business model canvas to track our hypotheses, mitigate risk, and build what we truly believe has the potential to become an incredible product. We know that we'll always have more hypotheses to validate, but we believe that at this point, we've de-risked this opportunity enough to begin seizing it immediately. I speak on behalf of the entire Resumazing team when I say that we can't wait to help everyone here get noticed. Thank you, and I will now take any questions. So, so um, I, I'm uh, just kind of curious. I mean, the industry you're trying to hack is the existing applicant tracking system um, industry, correct? That's part of it, yes. Uh, learning as much as we can about that to help job seekers. But, but you're essentially trying to hack the, the system that they, they use, right? So initially it started out as us trying to just determine what those keywords were, but then it evolved into us looking for patterns across millions of resumes, not just what keywords they search in those applicant tracking systems. And, and so the, does that, I'm just kind of wondering, is are you creating a, a enhanced version of that existing category? Um, I think we are, but for job seekers, it's a category that they previously weren't introduced to. So we're taking those applicant tracking systems, reverse engineering them in an intelligent way, and abstracting them for job seekers to screen themselves before they get screened in an official capacity. And at the same right. time... So instead of an applicant tracking system, you're now designing a new category called applicant optimization system, are you not? Yes. 
Yeah, I'm just, I mean, you might want to ponder that for a second, because I think that's a very interesting category. Um, while the companies have um, weapons, you've now started an arms race. And I think, it, if I'm correct, that actually might be quite good to describe your positioning as that. I mean, and, and I'm saying that as a, as a benign compliment, not as a criticism or, or whatever, but I was trying to get in my head is, you know, the companies have now had automated tools for the last five or 10 years, and now you've realized we could give it to the applicants and the recruiters. Is that correct? That is correct. Yeah, congratulations. I think it's great. Uh, and, and I thought the process you followed was uh, actually quite interesting. I learned a lot, so thank you. Thank Alexander? You. Yeah, just a quick question on <clears throat> validating um, revenue streams. So you said you got an average, you got a response with the average price would be twenty-one dollars. Do you have some strong evidence, like uh, pre-sales or simulated sales, or you know that somebody really put m money on the table? Um, so we haven't actually started taking money from any companies, uh, nor have we asked companies that are recruiting through our system to sign letters of intent, because we've been working so closely with them, uh, and they've been giving us enough time of day that we understand that they must be very invested in this platform. Uh, and to us, that was validation enough. So, are you, You're targeting the US? Or? Um, yes. First, we're trying to prove this in the United States. Uh, more specifically, our initial target market is focusing on college students studying engineering and computer science in the United States. Um, likewise, focusing on companies that will hire those students. And once we prove it in this category, we plan to expand uh, to other areas, eventually leading outside the United States. So my, my question really goes to it. Then how, is it like there, are, there are countries like Latin America, the applicant tracking systems don't actually exist in Latin America. Mm -hmm. United States, there's hundreds, if not thousands, of these systems. So you're competing in a crowded marketplace. My question goes to how are you going to actually enter the marketplace if you're going to create a new category? You have to go after an unserved, unloved, underserved customer to get the attention. How are you going to get in? What's your hook? So our initial hook to get massive amounts of job seekers is actually by pursuing the hackathon route, most specifically. We already have those hackathon organizers coming to us because they know us so well from all of our hackathon participation. Um, and right now their solution is they zip up all of their participants' resumes into a compressed file, and then they send that to the recruiters and they have no idea what to do with it. Um, so they're asking us to take that over, which is really great for us because that gives us immediate access to 35,000 students across every university in the country, which means that we can spread pretty quickly from there. Um, but on top of that, by partnering with uh, various colleges to, to get us seated there as well. I, I was really surprised that people would not pay uh -huh. you anything to have their resumes optimized. And as you described the willingness of companies to pay for resumes they actually looked at, it, it, I just had to ask the question, if I were a job seeker and I knew my resume could get optimized and have a better chance of getting looked at, would I pay if my resume got looked at? And I wonder, have you asked any of these you know, re job seekers okay, you won't pay for the service, but if we can validate that your resume got looked at, or if you, for example, get an interview, would you pay? And you might be able to do that, you know, to monitor that automatically. Have, has, has anybody suggest? I mean, somebody on that side's got, I mean, if I were looking for a job, I would pay to, if I got a great interview. Mm -hmm. And that's definitely something that we have looked into, and it certainly makes it more, uh, it certainly does a long way to convince consumers to start paying for it. Uh, but at the same time, it's really hard to prove that, at least in the initial term. It's something that we're more interested in pursuing once we've already built out that recruiting platform and we're able to verify, hey, Google bought you just because you optimized your resume through us. I get that. And uh, just consider that you might already have the data to know who got interviews or at least who got a look. So thank you. Thank you. That's all the time we have for questions. Thank you, Resumezy.